waist deep in mud, under a shower of artillery fire, young Lieutenant John Howard's spirit wasn't broken by relentless enemy onslaught, but by the worst rain in 30 years. The 25-year-old British Army officer was one of half a million brave young men who died in the flat dystopian landscape of Passchendaele as a million shells fell over Flanders. The battle, which started a hundred years ago today, was one of the bloodiest, muddiest conflicts of the Great War. It was forbidden to keep diaries to prevent useful details being leaked to the enemy. But young John, who died at Passchendaele, kept a secret journal at the time. At the Son and Ypres, in the campaign leading up to the offensive, which would take his life, he spelt out in graphic detail the hellish existence endured by the soldiers on the front line. In one 1916 entry, John calmly describes how he cheated death while manning an observation post, writing, Fairly busy today, sniper nearly got me. It is one of the many understatements of extreme danger filling the pages of his pocket books. But despite almost constant bombardment, his biggest gripe was a miserable weather, which turned his living quarters into a quagmire and held up supplies and letters from home. When leave was cancelled, he wrote, feeling blue, weather rotten, everything rotten. Another entry said, constant rain makes everything damp and one goes up to the observation post through a sea of mud. Two weeks later he added, our sleeping trenches caved in and we have mud up to the waist. It was a far cry from what he was used to, a cattle dealer's son, the second eldest of nine children from Lewisham, South London. John moved to Toronto in 1911 and worked as a railway clerk and a private secretary. He joined the 3rd Brigade of the Canadian Field Artillery at the outbreak of the war in 1914. The Canadians later joined the Allied forces at Passchendaele. Britain's Field Marshal Sir Douglas Haig wanted to reach the Belgian coast to destroy German submarine bases there. But the offensive came at a mighty price. Only brief glimpses of hope are found in John's harrowing diaries. One payday and visits home from the front. In England, John was reunited with Canadian wife Bertha, who followed him across the Atlantic. After visiting Ma Madame Tussauds and the London Hippodrome, he wrote, During these days, it has been some world. But back at the front, the mood swiftly darkens. As bad weather hit, he jotted, feeling very discouraged, cleaning horses and harness. Stayed him right into Bertha, no letter for, from her for two days. With depressing regularity, John recorded casualty names. He told of German prisoners driven mad by shelling, writing, One cannot but feel sorry for them, even though they are only getting what they endured in the first days of Eat. In early 1917, John returned to England for a few weeks for the birth of his daughter Kate. By October, his brigade was sent to relieve Australian troops under constant fire near Passchendaele, North West Eat. Providing shelters for the men and cover for their batteries became practically impossible due to the heavy shelling and swampy ground. Official records stated, this is the worst position the brigade has ever been in. Casualties were listed and the first recorded on October the 19th was Lieutenant J.J. Hayward, wounded and killed on his way to the dressing station. He died on the way to a field hospital in the Third Battle of Ypres. No diary was found covering his final days. We can only wonder whether that final volume was lost in his last battle. Three weeks later, Bertha and Kate sailed home to Canada on the Olympic, the sister ship of the Titanic. John was buried at the Divisional Cemetery in Ypres. He is also remembered at Hither Green Cemetery in London, alongside family members. They include his younger brother George, a Royal Flying Corps officer and military cross holder who died in a flying accident after the war. John's battlefield diary and an early journal from 1912 were given to one of his great nephews, John Coppen of Raynham, Kent, 
when he visited Canada in 2004. John approached the Imperial War Museum to offer these priceless insights into the horrors of tr that troops endured. And now they form part of the archive and complete a missing piece of history. John said, the diaries will serve to pre preserve his memory and the selflessness he shown, along with countless others in the service of this country. Lieutenant Hayward and other heroes of Passchendaele will be honored in Ypres today and tomorrow. And his great nephew will remember with pride his bravery and sacrifice. Yeah.